Hi guys, this is Creative Cuts, a channel where I build, paint and create things. In today's video I'm going to attempt an idea that I've been playing around with in my head for a while now. And, and that was to make a beach scene with some palm trees. I love survival computer games like The Forest or Stranded Deep, where you have to build and craft stuff in order to survive. So let's see what we can make with that as a starting point for this build. If you're new here and like these kind of building channels, then I have lots of videos for you to check out on my channel and you can subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos. And if you're feeling generous, you can hit the like button to show YouTube your appreciation. Firstly, I would need a base and in this instance, I used a piece of insulation board that I found. I drew out some basic shapes for guidance and then added sections for elevation. I wanted a beach scene that was enclosed by large rock formations, so I glued these pieces down with some PVA glue. Once everything was dry, I used a hot wire cutter to carve the foam into shape. I found the key to this was to let the wire do the cutting and take it slow. Forcing it through will not help your cause. I carved out a gentle slope of the ocean, and then began to shape the rocks a bit. A hot wire cutter can give you some really interesting shapes. But I will cover most of this with modelling compound later, so I'm really just looking for rough shapes at this point. I also carve into the foam with a sharp knife. This can be a great way of getting striations into rocks very fast. There's still a quite a few cut marks that I wanted to smooth out a bit, so I sanded these down with some sandpaper. Next I mixed up some of what is one of my favourite modelling materials and that's Sculptor Mould. This is my go-to when laying down to rain or rocks. It's such a versatile product that lets you achieve a variety of textures easily. I mix this with some water and spread it out over the model with a wooden stick. Once dry, I could immediately see that the shape of my rock still looked like a rectangle of foam, so I needed to break up the straightish lines. Luckily, I would saved most of the foam offcuts I had already carved, so I glued some of these back onto the model and repeated the layer of sculptor mold. I also coated everything in white gesso to prime it. I mixed up some dark wash and let this soak into all the little nooks and crannies in my rocks. I added a few more colours like browns and greens to give some variation to the colours and give it a bit more of a natural feel. What really helped me to get the colours right was to look at reference photos of actual coastal rock. This may sound obvious, but all too often we revert to a preconceived default in our mind. Water is blue and rocks are grey, for example. I kept building up my washes until I was happy. And whilst I was building all of this, my mind started to create a story. What if there was a plane crash? 
and a survivor living on this beach. So I ordered a small airfix kit of something that I thought looked civilian and set about putting it together. This whole process really took me back to being a kid and building model planes. I masked up some of the windows and primed this up with my airbrush. And while I had some primer loaded up in my airbrush, I also sprayed up some plastic palm tree tops that I'd saved from a previous project. Link above if you want to watch that. I also sprayed up the trunks of my palms. Once dry, I added a lighter green to add some variation and resemble newer growth. And while waiting for one thing to dry, I would switch between that and the plane and add a bit of paint here and there and apply some decals. And with the plane all put together, it looks pretty cool. And I still get that same sense of pride as I did as a kid. I added a bit of brown paint to the tips of the palm leaves to show some dried leaves. But my plane was looking far too perfect to have crashed, so even though I'd spent all the time building it up, it was now time to destroy it. I grabbed my Dremel and started cutting and grinded away at my model. I added dark wash all over the plane to begin the weathering process and chipped away at some of the paintwork here and there to give it a sense of age. I spread out some PVA glue where I wanted my sand to go. and then took some sand-coloured tile grout and a fine piece of mesh and gently sprinkled this over the model. I find that at this scale, grout represents sand much better than actual sand, as it's made up of much finer powder than real sand. I spread this out and then add a fine layer of IPA. This moistens the sand, allowing a coat of diluted PVA to soak right in, locking everything in place. As this was all drying, I played around with the position of the plane and some palm trees. Playing around visually like this before committing to an idea can really help sometimes and is something that I do often. I add a few small stones and pieces of debris. All these little steps really help build the illusion of scale in the final piece. And don't seem to make much difference at first, but as part of something much bigger. They're crucial to achieving a sense of scale and realism. I wanted to expand my story of a plane crash on the beach and wondered if the pilot had survived. I decided he did and so in full survivalist mode I set about building a shelter. Not just some little lean-to. I wanted something solid and that was meant to last. So I cut some logs to size and laid out the foundations. I also decided that our survivor was very resourceful and had repurposed the stairs from the plane into his own construction. For planks I usually like to use coffee stirrers, but as this scale is much smaller than I'm used to, I decided I would cut them down to make mini planks. And one by one I laid the floor. A nice bit of decking and a couple of steps up into the main living area, same process as before, more planks and more floor. And then onto the roof, some solid logs for the main supports, onto which I also attached some uprights for a door and used these also for the support for some walls. I 
I also had a piece of wing left over from the plane crash and thought this would be a nice addition to the roof. I added some smaller planks for added support. I then needed some foliage to bulk out the roof. Luckily I still had some palm trees left over so I sprayed these light brown. I also gave all the wood a base of watered down brown. To age the wood a little, I lightly brushed in some grey while the brown was still wet. And when my palm tops were dry, I cut them up and attached them one by one to the roof. I used a little wooden pokey stick to help press down the leaves while they dried. I also added a chair salvaged from the plane and figured our survivor would have built a little table so he can sit in his chair, possibly rest a drink and watch the sunset. In true survivor style I built a little campfire too. It was then time to add the ocean to my beach scene. I used some acrylic sheets to dam the edges. I added a bit of extra tape just to be double sure of no leaks. I then mixed up the resin. This is a two part epoxy resin. I pour it out in equal measures into separate cups and then combine these into a third cup to try to keep all the measurements equal. I mix this for about five minutes or so and then add some resin tint and ink to color my resin. A little goes a long way here, so it's best just to add a drop at a time. I then poured my resin over my beach scene. There was no room for hesitancy here. Prepare your workspace, take a deep breath, and commit. And I love watching resin pour over my models, as it feels like at this stage they really come to life. When it was dry, I was astounded at how good the water looked. There were a few bubbles here and there that I didn't pop, but, but the level of transparency was spot on. And as good as the water looked, it almost looked glass-like. Mm, not very ocean-like at all. So, I needed some waves. I have various gels and pastes for such things, but I wanted to try and carve them directly into the resin. I took my Dremel and attached a rounded burring tool and randomly jabbed the surface of my water, creating little depressions. I tried to keep this as random as possible to avoid any recognisable patterns forming. This was a bit messy and you definitely need adequate safety precautions for this. Gloves, face mask and eye protection, as well as a good hoover are definitely needed. I was a bit apprehensive about this as I'd never done this before but I soon found the level of sensitivity needed and really enjoyed carving away. And with my water suitably rippled, I set about adding some waves. I used a combination of a product by a German modelling company called Nock for white water and foam and a little white ink. I slowly built this up by scraping it onto the model and by pulling it away in the directions of the waves that I wanted to create. When this was all dry, I masked off the general area so I could come in with some clear coat spray. This restores the gloss to the areas that I had sanded with the Dremel and also brings back the gloss in any of the white areas that might have dulled too. Just a light even coat is all that's needed as this stuff is pretty strong. I 
And while this was drying, I knocked up two more additions to the scene to help our survivor really thrive. I remember in the survival computer games I would play. After initially establishing a base, the next step was a reliable source of food and clean drinking water. In this case, I borrowed a couple of ideas from the game Stranded Deep and built a water collector, complete with blue tarp, and a drying rack for preserving meat. And while all this was going on, I was working on our survivor himself in the background. The FX kit came with two pilots. They are posed in a seating position with one arm raised as if holding something. I thought he could easily enough be adapted to be our survivor. I carefully carved away at him with a scalpel and reshaped his helmet into hair. I also gave him a beard with some milliput and crafted a fishing rod out of some very fine garden wire. A simple paint job and some fine fishing line finishes the job. Thank you all for watching and thank you also for the amazing continued support you guys show the channel. This one took a bit longer than expected but I also got completely carried away with it as I was having so much fun. Thank you for the patience between videos but I wanted to make this as good as it could be and I hope you liked it and maybe even learned something. If you'd like to see more videos like this, you can subscribe to stay up to date with all the latest videos. Be sure to hit the like button and let me know your thoughts in the comments. I'd like to think this diorama says something about the nature of never giving up, even when your situation looks difficult. With some creative thinking and resourcefulness, you can thrive against the odds. Thank you for watching and enjoy.